really like the henchperson of Indeterminate Gender from the series of Unfortunate Events Netflix show. Not just because I like the actor and the character, but because the character that they were based on in the books, like, kind of sucked. I don't want to use the word problematic, because I feel like that word's become kind of meaningless, but, um... I'm not looking for something to be offended by, but the way the character is portrayed in the books, it's as if being androgynous is supposed to be like inherently disgusting and scary. Like the character is kind of dehumanized. They're sort of treated as if they're a monster because they never have, they never talk, and like they're just like this huge scary creature who's always described as the one who looks like neither a man or a woman. There's one scene where the creature like. Um, grabs the kids and it's like described in this really like revolting language as if like the fact that the kids are like stuck under this creature's arms is just like the most repulsive thing that they could experience so um then in the the 2005 movie the, char the character is just kind of in the background because they're a minor character in a book that's being changed into a movie so they just get pushed really far in the back like the other hench people do i guess so um that happened, and I don't know how much credit I should give Daniel Handler because obviously he's just one of the producers and writers on the Netflix show, but I like to imagine at least that what I'm seeing is a creator who wrote something and after some time has passed, and he's probably learned some things and had lots of life experiences since then, realizes that um, the original hench person who looks like neither a man or a woman was kind of a cruel character and just could be done better than they were done in the book. So in the TV show, I think they're like the most changed of all the hench people from the books. Um, they just are somebody who looks gender non-conforming and they have this whole other character that is like kind of based on being really like philosophical and like coming off like this kind of college student who's always sort of rambling about stuff and actually sort of seeming like the sweetest and most likable of all the hench people. Although I feel like the hench people are just like the best part of the show in general. That's like a great thing about the show. But anyway, so I just really appreciate this. I feel like um, the reason it impresses me is because times haven't changed enough that they couldn't get away with having the character the way they were in the book. Like, maybe somebody would complain, but most people would be like, you're being too sensitive, and it wouldn't really impact the show badly, I don't think. So, yeah, I like to imagine that they really were like, hey, this character kind of is weird now that I'm really thinking about it, let's make a better character. Another thing about the show is, um, in, I believe in all the illustrations for the books and in the movie, all the major characters are depicted as white, and that's not the case in the show which is cool. Also in the show, they often make a point of saying that characters are canonically gay, who in the books, you couldn't tell if they were supposed to be gay. And I kind of like that a lot too. I think what I find kind of touching about this as somebody who grew up with the books and is now an adult, is just sort of the idea that when we were kids, we weren't necessarily included in the books that we wanted to read. And so um, it's kind of therapeutic as adults to get to go back to the same books basically in a show that you know is a really close adaptation and has like a very similar tone and just find ourselves included in it. I think that's really special. So I'm really enjoying the show in general. I think it's a really good adaptation of the books. It has a lot of like additional material and scenes and characters that aren't in the books. And man, there's just something so nice about like a book being adapted to a TV show. I really hope that like Harry Potter gets an adaptation like this. It really can't happen fast enough as far as I'm concerned. Because um, yeah, now at this like streaming television, you know, age, we can have books be adapted in a way that like they weren't necessarily fit to be adapted into movies or the movie adaptations missed things or just like had to be really different from the books and now things aren't really like that anymore like uh anyway sorry this is like i've made several drafts of this video and i think i thought that because i enjoyed the show so much and i had so many ideas i could just talk off the top of my head about it but i was really wrong so <laughs> oops anyway i think it's a really good netflix show and I think the um, marathon format really fits the books. 
which might sound weird because I know a complaint a lot of people have about the stories is they're formulaic. I see people saying it now and I also remember when I was a kid. I know they were really popular, but it always seemed to me like I really enjoyed the books and whenever I tried to talk to other kids about them, they would always say, I stopped reading them because they're so formulaic. So that's the point. I don't actually think they're that formulaic. I feel like they're formulaic enough that you start to expect certain things will happen because they've happened several times, but then they actually stop happening. Like, once you get used to, like, a really distinct formula for the books, the orphans are just kind of thrust into chaos. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you remember, but, like, in the original books, in the, um, on the inside jacket, they would always have, like, a little place where there would be a picture of Count Olaf in whatever disguise he was in, and I think there would be a picture of the guardian, and then there would be a picture of the kids. And, um, yeah, so for the first several books, like, there would be, like, an actual guardian, and Count Olaf would be in a specific disguise, but pretty soon there wasn't even, like, a specific guardian anymore, and Count Olaf wasn't necessarily in disguise. So it didn't really follow the formula pretty quickly. I think, um, anyway, I think it lends itself really well to the marathon format because of the way that the books are so much like real life. Now, you may question why I would say this, but I think that even though they're really stylized, they really um, capture a feeling that sometimes when things are going badly, they just all go bad at once, and having a positive attitude or just getting through a lot of bad things doesn't necessarily make a bunch of bad things stop happening to you. So. Um, yeah, I think there's something that actually feels depressingly realistic about reading the books or watching the show and like kind of waiting for things to improve and they just like don't really. I also like that particularly in the first few books, really like, you know, I think the second book is like the only one where there's like a brief moment where it seems like the kids are actually going to have a really nice life. Like, I mean, aside from their parents being dead, that's, that's already bad, but like, <laughs> In pretty much every other one, they, like, enter a place that, like, obviously sucks, but, like, they usually meet some adult who's kind of someone that they can relate to, or another kid who's kind of someone that they can relate to, but at the same time, like, that person is never really either, like, emotionally competent or just, like, doesn't really have the power to try to help them, so that person isn't really someone that they can rely on, but... They try to enjoy that person and they try to all work together and like enjoy their home and try to make a home for themselves even though it kind of sucks and then count all of shows up so I, you know it's kind of i mean it gets so formulaic of course that like you know that even the sort of trying to make the best of it section of the book is immediately going to be like ruined when count all of shows up but like I, I i don't know i think it's like you keep reading it and so you keep kind of, I think, relating to their desire to like try to make stuff good, even though it never really succeeds, because that's sort of how people are. Like, obviously we don't have any other choice but to try to make things good even when they're not. And um, also, you know, when we're inside our own story, we don't have Lemony Snicket telling us that it's gonna end up badly, so we have to hope for the best, even if we know that's not really probably what's going to happen. Sorry for being so depressing. Um, I think that when I've started watching the two seasons, like when I watched the last one a year ago and when I started watching this one, at the beginning I felt like, wow, this really isn't working for me at all, and I actually can't even believe that the kid, that the books worked for me as a kid, because I can see that, like, it's a very similar in tone, but, like, oh, uh, it's just, like, so weirdly, like, twee and, like, flat all the lines are delivered in this like weird flat way and like everything is like so stylized and kind of like chilly that it's like really weird to me and it's like if I'm marathoning it it's like I just sort of like pass through this veil where suddenly I'm like in the world of the show and like the emotional tone like totally works and makes sense for me which I think is really cool and I think it's like one reason why marathoning it is really good. The other reason I think is that you kind of 
experience the same feeling of the Baudelaire's where like this is just their life and like things are just getting thrown at them. I don't know if this is what other people do when they marathon stuff, but like I think it is that you just kind of keep watching. You don't necessarily like, pause between episodes or like think when an episode starts or ends. So, you know, you just kind of keep watching. Okay, they're at, you know, the school. Okay, they're at the Vile Village. Okay, they're at the hospital. And like, you know, it just kind of goes on and on because there's not necessarily any breaks for them and there's not necessarily any natural breaks for you if you're just watching it. <coughs> well, one thing I was going to say, I don't know how much this applies. When I was a teenager and I was in a series of unfortunate events fandom, it was very like, I don't know if other people felt like this, but I think something that makes it a weird thing to be trying to like write fan fiction about or like really have like a lot of feelings about as a fan is that like the content is so what we would call wumpy like over the top angsty but the style is like so flat and cold and kind of mannered that it's really like and then obviously the terrible events that happen are always so like absurd so it can be really weird to be trying to like relate to it as like a fan and have like a genuine emotional reaction to it and try to write like a fan fiction about how sad the Baudelaire's are when like the style is like so um, opposed to that and so even if you try to take the characters out of the canon and write a sad fan fiction about them that isn't in the style of the story it almost like doesn't really feel like they belong there I just think that's kind of interesting um, oh, one thing that's interesting um, in some, like, fan forums I've read and stuff is that a lot of people are like, oh, the books, these are people who read the books as a kid, they're like, oh, the books were, like, much more sad and serious, I can't believe that the TV show has, like, made everything into a big joke. I think that's really interesting, you know, and, like, somebody always has to kind of pop up and be like, no, actually, like, this is the tone that the books had, and so, yeah, I think it's funny. I don't know if it's like the way the kids actually experience them or like the way you remember stuff like as you read it as a kid, but it's just kind of funny to think about people reading the books and like seeing them mysterious as a kid. I mean, I also think it's true that maybe like the absurdity of having like absolutely no control over your situation and having like no one listen to your experiences is much more, much less absurd if you are a child. So that might have something to do with why it seems more serious to kids and like funnier to adults. I read a really good post like a year ago, which I should try to dig up, and um, they were arguing that the reason the, um, the 2005 movie wasn't good, in their opinion, was one of the specific examples they gave was apparently in the movie Mr. Poe doesn't actually find out that Count Olaf hit Klaus and then he goes on saying that like the Baudelaire's have to live with Count Olaf because he's their guardian and um, apparently this isn't um, what happens in the book or the TV show. I'm talking out of my ass because I haven't actually seen the movie or read the book since like 10 or 15 years ago when I was in high school and um, I don't feel that bad about that because I have a pretty good memory for fandom things but like um, if I'm making any huge mistakes, please correct me. But, like, yeah, I think, sorry, the reason that they chose this specific example was because they were saying in the movie, Mr. Poe doesn't really have, like, all the information, so he's not as, like, horribly negligent of the children as he is um, in the show and the book. And they were saying that they thought it was kind of one of the major themes of the books, that, like, the adults really behave horribly, and they're, like, really, really explicitly not there for the kids. And that in the movie they try to sort of like portray it in kind of a softer way where it's like oh he just didn't understand how bad things actually were I think that's cool now I'm gonna just review various and sundry other aspects of the TV show I enjoy the music I think like okay so when I get into the tone of the show it's sort of like this big anti-joke like it's almost like rather than me thinking that many individual things in the show are necessarily funny it's like I'm just impressed that they're keeping it up like I feel like even reading the books it's like whoa I'm impressed he's keeping this up but like watching the tv show when you think about like all the people involved with it and it's like wow they're all keeping this up 
they're all at this really weird like flat tone where all these really bizarre things are happening and it's portrayed in this weirdly like chilly sort of way and like they're all committed to that so I think it's like really engaging to watch once you get into it because of that and I think one of my favorite parts was um and I think it's in the vile village where Count Olaf just suddenly you know performs that like scat song and like it's not even like the song was like that funny but just the fact that it just like started and like the show committed to it I think is like emblematic of what makes the show so entertaining to me and like something that I can't really stop watching once I get into it because it's so committed to its weirdness I guess I really like the hench people the best of like anything else in the show overall I really like the the time that they give to like Count Olaf's perspective I guess you could argue like okay if they're trying to portray him as like more like actually super evil and abusive um maybe it's kind of weird that he's also being portrayed as like our point of view character and like at times like comes to feel sort of so likable but you know I can't really complain about that like he's just so entertaining and like the hench people are just like awesome I think the hook-handed man is probably my favorite I love that he and Sonny are like BFFs and that he has to kind of forget that he's supposed to be like causing problems for her and being a villain because like they're just pals um, that's probably my favorite thing. Oh, my one big complaint is I really don't like the look of the quagmires. Now, maybe I'm just projecting the illustrations from the books because I don't totally remember how they were described. But, at least in the illustration, they're portrayed as these very weird kids who have a very weird distinctive haircut. And, like, yeah, I dislike the fact that, you know, they get introduced and they're, like, supposed to be these important characters. At least like as a kid I really liked them and was really invested in them and like you know they're for most of the series they're the only other kids the main kids meet who are like basically the same type of child as they are and obviously when you're consuming the books especially as a kid you know I guess it, maybe it's not super healthy but it does kind of lead to kind of like this us versus them mindset where you're like yeah like I'm a geeky kid with a talent and I care about it and like so these are like some of the only characters we meet who are like really really like this and I feel like in the show you know they're not necessarily given enough time to be really developed as someone that we would care about but like I honestly feel like the visuals have something to do with that like I guess I just wish that they would have made the kids be more distinctive looking particularly if they made them look the way that they do in the illustrations but really if they just did anything like I feel like I couldn't even pick those two kids out of a lineup no offense to the actors it's just the way that they're um, made to look in the show and that kind of disappoints me um, oh I don't love all the VFD stuff I really like Larry I like Jacques yeah Jacques is okay I guess I just don't like Jacqueline that much for whatever reason I think it's a little bit like maybe not a great idea to like put in all the VFD stuff not because I think it's like inherently a bad thing but because they have to keep the plot the same um, you know it's not so much like they have stuff like Count Olaf or Esme getting their perspective shown in a way that didn't happen in the books because that feels like relevant but you know just constantly being told oh by the way all this time some other people are trying to help the orphans but they didn't actually help the orphans, obviously, which you know because they didn't help them in the books. So it's just kind of like, okay. <sighs> I think maybe it's just that like none of those characters really is like as enjoyable to me as like the hench people and Olaf and Esme's like extended time has been. I think that's pretty much my review. I'm really enjoying the show. I wish I could have been better spoken about this. I really thought that like ideas would just pour out of me and they would sound great, but um, well, I'm used to disappointment.